O Lord, teach us your ways, that we may walk in your truth. You comfort and help us day by day. We trust your loving care. You are the King of heaven and earth. We give you praise and thanks. Alleluia. Lord Jesus, you invite us to pray and promise that where two or three come together in your name, there you are with us. Answer our prayers and fulfill our desires according to your wisdom and love. Strengthen us in the knowledge of your truth and grant us life everlasting. Amen. A lesson from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at the 18th verse. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. missing gathering together to, to worship with you, but we are doing our, our best to keep you connected to our, our God and his word. We look forward uh, in joy and anticipation to that day when we can gather together again here in God's house, around his word, around his sacrament, with, with one another. In the meantime, one of the things we're going to do is a, a series on uh, our church service, the things that we do, the things we receive when we gather here. I hope you're missing these opportunities too. Uh, looking forward to being joined together again 
And so our hope is this series will give us a chance to instruct and understand and, and more fully appreciate what happens when we gather together. Because it is a, a beautiful thing that happens with, with rich history and, and symbolism and, and meaning. We're going to start at the, the beginning and, and just walk our way through uh, a church service. We're going to start uh, at the beginning. One of the first things that, that happens that indicates that it's time for, for church is uh, our bells are, are rung. We know and, and love our bells here at St. John's. Our bell tower is uh, an emblem, a, a logo for us for, for years. It stands out uh, front and center of our church. The bells, the, the ringing of the bells does not have a, a basis from the Bible. It's a, a practical device that was used along the way. Think back to a time before clocks and watches and phones that told you the time uh, at, at any moment that you wanted. The bell, the bell tower then, it, it served the purpose of announcing. It's time for church. It's time to gather together around our, our God and his word. And even though now we have uh, clocks and watches and, and phones to tell us the time, it's still a, a tradition we keep going. It announces it's time. It's about to, to begin. If you want to think of a little bit of an example from the Bible, I think of the, the beginning of the book of Revelation. The Apostle John is uh, about to be taken and, and, and placed in the, a worship setting, lampstands all around, God speaking to him, our Savior speaking to him. And, and it begins by, by John hearing this loud, thunderous voice announcing what's about to happen. And so our bells can serve that same purpose too. It announces, here we are in the presence of God. It's time to pay attention. It's time to sit up as we're about to hear and see some spectacular things. After the, the bells ring, we, we usually welcome everybody. Uh, we're glad that you're here. Announce some of the, the, the themes and the thoughts for the day. And then we jump into uh, an, an opening hymn. An opening hymn was not the way that the, the church service began, if you go way, way back in, in church history. It crept up along the way, kind of for a, a, a time purpose as well. Even when the bells ring, and, and you know that even now, <laughs> with clocks and watches, sometimes some of us get here a little later than others. <laughs> the opening hymn is, is a little bit of a pause. It's a little bit of a delay to, to give people time uh, to arrive and, and find their seat. And then with that opening hymn, it lets us focus our, our minds, our thoughts, our attitude to prepare for, for worship. It can have some of the, the themes or the ideas for the day to help us uh, get ready for what's to, come, what's to come and what kind of thoughts and ideas are going to be shared. In some churches, during the opening, the opening hymn, they'll have uh, a procession. Right? The, the pastor, pastors, or acolytes, or, or various people will come in with a a golden rod with a, a cross or a crucifix on the top, a, a standard. That has the, the history, the, the roots back in, in Roman days. Based off of, of the Roman military, they would gather around a, a, a golden, a gilded eagle. That's what would lead them into battle. And, and then otherwise, that was a symbol for them to, to rally around much like maybe our, our flag does for our nation or our country, you would rally and rejoice around this symbol. And it might seem odd that the, the church would adapt that practice, uh, something based in, in the military, until you re look at and you remember what's on top of our standard, what's on top of, of our golden uh, pole, or on top of the pole, it's a cross, it's a, it's a crucifix, it's a symbol of a man dying. And yes, as people would, would follow that cross up the aisle, it would remind us all why we're here, what it is we're rallying around, who it is 
we're here to worship, who it is we're here to listen to. It's a God that was willing to die for you and for me. And so it properly focuses us on why we're here. And even if we, we don't use a, a procession or a, a processional cross or crucifix, when you come into to our church, one of the first things I, I hope and pray you'll notice is up front, <laughs> strong, and, and, and in the center is, is a large cross. Right? The cross is the center uh, of what we do. Our crucified Savior is the focus that we come to, to, to worship and praise. I hope the, the cross is not just a, a nice wall decoration that we take for granted. Let it always serve for us a, a focal point. Share with you some words the Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians that reminds us that Christ and Him crucified is the, the focus and the center of all we do. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand miraculous signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. May Christ and Him crucified be the center and focus of our lives here at church as we live our lives in the world. May it be our focus and confidence for all eternity. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people throughout the world, to strengthen believers and to enlighten unbelievers, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For peace and justice among nations, for honest leaders and good neighbors, for the gift of love, for steadfast faith and patient endurance, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For those who suffer pain or sorrow, for the lonely and depressed, for the poor and needy, for those who love us and those who hate us, we pray, Lord, have mercy. Be gracious to us, defend us by your power, and bring us to glory everlasting. To you, O Lord, we entrust ourselves. Amen. You have taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive with believing hearts the blessing of our God, the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless and preserve us. Amen.